I'm standing next to a little pine tree here at our Walmart yard and I notice it's ready to start putting out pollen. Selena, why don't you brush one of these things? Let's see what... Oh gosh, yeah. Okay. Ooh. Oh man. One more time. Brush that stuff. I wonder if the camera's picking that up. Let's try over here where the light's a little different. Make sure the camera picks it up. Oh yeah, it just looks like dust in the wind. Whew, no wonder my throat's itchy today. And it gets all over the cars and trucks here. Sometimes if it gets really windy on, on just the right day, it looks like a cloud of dust being blown across a field or something. So the pollen on this tree right here is kind of inferior. Generally speaking, windblown pollen tends to be less nutritious, uh, not quite as good for the bees as the type of pollen that sticks on them when they go from flower to flower. And it looks much different under a microscope or even a magnifying glass. It looks like a different type of pollen. The bees will collect this if there's nothing else for them, but generally just like picking nectar that has a higher sugar content, they're smart enough to pick pollen that has a better nutrition uh, quality to it. And this is definitely not it. Just gonna feed our nukes and move on. Made these nukes two weeks ago. We're getting harvested in about five days, six days for next weekend sales. And we wanna feed them one last time before we harvest them. This property belongs to my next door neighbor, Jack. Nice little spot. Not a very big yard, but it's a good spot. Here's an interesting idea. Kevin Monfelt from Nebraska likes using these plastic pro nuke boxes. And he drills a hole in the lids that's 1 and 15 sixteenths of an inch. And he uses the same 2 inch tent plugs that we use for feeding in with our buckets as a plug for his lids. That's a good idea. Kevin was here a couple weeks ago and split a bunch of colonies into nukes and just leaving them here for a couple weeks so they can get a start brewed up a little bit before he takes them home to Nebraska. Sun's down. Trailer's loaded. It's leaving for Nebraska in about 10 minutes. Looks good. Good secure load. So it's a beautiful morning, early morning. Sun's not been up a real long time. We're, this is the last day of making nukes that are gonna be sold through the store. We're running just a little bit behind. Usually I try to have nukes made up three weeks ahead of the actual sale date so we really can check out the queens and make sure they're doing a good job before being sold. But we've had uh, uh, several days of rain and other things that have kind of slowed us down. So at this point, uh, the nukes we're making today will be sold in two weeks and we'll just have to be attentive and make sure we're doing the best we can when we sell them on that later date. Um, we're going to change the way we do things. Today's more about quantity than quality. In past videos, I've been showing how we've been using double screen boards and different things for assuring that we don't mistakenly put the queen in the nuke that we're producing. And today, Selena and I are working alone and we're just going to go right into the beehive, pick the assets that we want for the nuke. I'll probably do the first round. I hand the frames to her. She can look for the queen again and hopefully we won't miss any. Of course, doing it that way, there's a chance we'll miss a couple of queens of, from the original colony and, and so be it. It's much faster. It's probably twice as fast doing that. And when we inspect the colonies two weeks from now to transfer them into a jester box to sell, we'll know if we accidentally put a queen from last year in there because all the queens we're introducing that we're uh, getting from Indian Summer Honey Farm this spring have a green mark on them for this year. 2024 is green. Last year was red, so it should be evident when we're transferring them that we get, you know, a nuke that has a new queen. And uh, we just got to do it that way. We've got about 80 nuke boxes on the truck, and we need to do that today. We need to get them done today. I think we can pull them all out of this yard of bees. This is a pretty strong yard of bees. 
those triples are on there for a reason. I think uh, we're going to make the nukes just a little stronger. We've been trying to make them with uh, two and a half frames of brood. <clears throat> and today I think it's going to be closer to three frames of brood with not quite as many bees because they're going to be sitting here all day or half a day while we work this yard. I don't want them to overheat. It is supposed to get 80 degrees today. So we're going to be putting a little more sealed brood in them, a few less bees so that in two weeks from now they'll be just the right size. The weather has turned. I think we've left the frigid days behind us. Um, it's supposed to be close to the mid 80s later in this week, so quite warm. And uh, so we can make the nukes a little uh, lighter on bees, a little heavier on brood, and I think they'll be just fine. And that's going to be our strategy today. Um, we're in Wolf Fork Valley, which is near Raven Gap, Georgia. Selena, if you could very slowly pan around the, uh, the yard people can see what this place looks like. It's gorgeous right here. Right across from the bee yard is a uh, small strawberry field. I often say that I do not pollinate anymore, but in just this one case, I do it for a friend. He's very conscientious of the bees being right here. Um, we don't have any trouble with spray or anything in this situation. And we're surrounded by mountains, uh, 360 degrees. It's all just uh, real beautiful. This is one of our cooler weather locations. It's cool up in this valley, but uh, again, I think the frigid weather is behind us, and I think uh, things are going to change now. The leaves are just coming out. It's really gorgeous. A gorgeous day. Should be good beekeeping today. I don't know if there's any nectar flowing or not at all. There's a wild cherry tree right there. Look at that, Selena. It's just barely putting out the blossoms, but they're not big enough to, can't, almost can't really see that they're there yet, but that's a wild cherry tree right there. I say within three or four or five days, that'll actually have open blooms on it and they'll be getting nectar from that. We don't want that nectar in our any of our honey supers because it tastes exactly like Robitussin cough syrup. So it's okay to go in the brood nest. Bees do fine with it, but we sure don't want it. Um, and these, these colonies are about to get knocked way back to where they won't be making any surplus honey for a couple weeks anyway. It won't be strong enough. So. All right, should be a nice day. You ready? I'm ready. You're ready, all right, good deal. First colony looks real good. This is actually what we expect throughout here. We put these triple, or the third story on about two weeks ago, knowing that if we didn't, we were gonna have major swarming issues. Hopefully they've all held on until we get back here today to split. Um, but if they're all like this, we're going to get our 80 nukes easy and still leave enough brood behind where they can grow up and be ready for the honey flow in about, let's see, the major spring flow in this area should occur in about two weeks, maybe three. Traditionally, the date here is um, the first week in May, but we're running just a few days early this year, so it might be just the last few days of April when it starts. Either way, if, if they haven't swarmed already, we'll be knocking their socks off and they will not swarm ahead of the honey flow. And we will leave the third box on so they'll have all the space in the world. And then we can just forget them for at least three weeks. And I said it in a previous video, I need more yards where we can just forget them for three weeks and this will be one of those. Okay, got that step done. Left a fair amount of bees in the colony, so they'll be back up in shape pretty quickly. They were real light on food, but uh, there's nectar right around the corner, so we're not going to feed them. So we have some autumn olive going on here. This is real close to the shop. We're in Lakemont, Georgia. Uh, bees work this stuff. It's April 16th, so it's kind of kind of the very beginning of our spring wildflower season. We might get a little bit of this mixed in. There's not huge amounts of it in our area, but this particular bee yard has quite a bit around. It's, it's considered somewhat invasive in our area. People try to remove it, kind of like privet. They try to take it out before it takes over. And this particular field right here has it all around the perimeter. It smells good. I can smell it standing next to this one. Dogwoods are blooming too. The bees don't work dogwoods, at least not in our area. You can see them all throughout the woods here. I've never seen the bees work dogwoods around here. Maybe they do somewhere else. 
Anyway, all of, Autumn Olive. Okay, right here in the grafting yard, we have a uh, pretty good-sized good American holly, and it is not far from blooming. Shouldn't be long now. It's going to be loaded with blooms. I have a lot of American holly on my property, dozens of these trees, and it's a short bloom, maybe seven days. The honey's good. The honey is light. It does crystallize fairly quickly. And for us, of course, it just goes in with our wildflower blend of things. We can't keep it isolated. But it is a desirable honey if you can get some of this in your mix. It's a good thing. Here's something we don't want in the mix. Some years we get it, some years we don't. This is mountain laurel. I have a bunch of this on my property. And I think the Lake Mont George is actually mountain laurel central. I must have hundreds of these things on my property. But the bees don't always collect it. So they, if there's a good nectar flow off of other sources, they usually go to the other sources first. Uh, the very best mountain laurel years, or maybe I should use the term worst mountain laurel years, when they collect quite a bit of it, is when it's a drought situation. So you never know until you taste it. And uh, that's why we like our first honey super to be deep frames. That way if we can't use it, it can be given back to the bees or perhaps given to the nukes and stuff that we're producing. And we certainly don't want to extract it and absolutely do not want to sell it. So this thing, I, this thing will be in full bloom soon. We just hauled in a bunch of singles. We're gonna go through them. These are getting sold to the University of Georgia next week. They're buying 50 for some of their research. Good singles. Trying to give them good stuff so they have something good to work with. So we are here to put our breeder queens on what we call timing frames. Mm -hmm. We actually like to use comb that's got a few years on it. The darker comb is rounded in the bottom. It's easier to graft out of the newer comb. So we're gonna find our breeder queens and set them up for grafting next Tuesday. This is Friday morning. And if we set them up on a comb on Friday morning, it works out so we can graft on Tuesday afternoon just perfect. And we'll show the process. So I just told John the breeder queen's worth 500 bucks. So <laughs> no, no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> so Selena has found one breeder queen, very well marked. John has found the other. So while we're working these colonies and preparing them, we just put the breeder queen on the frame she was found on in a nuke box isolator so she won't get lost while we do this stuff. Go ahead, Selena. So Selena's going to check every frame very carefully for any sign of any supersedure cells, swarm cells, whatever. Make sure that all the brood looks very healthy. Good. I see some cells are filling in with nectar there a little bit. So there's a minor nectar flow at the moment. She's got a pretty decent pattern. This queen is from last year. Both of these breeder queens are from last year. And these are straight up Caucasian breeder queens. I actually just ordered uh, a couple more breeder queens from Shabu. They should be here in June or July. This time I'm going to go with Carniolan queens inseminated with Caucasian semen. That uh, hybrid vigor between those two really works. And I've had those in the past and really liked them. And now that we've managed to get a fair amount of Caucasian in our outfit, uh, I want to start putting back a little bit of Carniolan. I like that in there too. Combination. The combination of those two is really good. Go ahead, John, check this one for any kind of mischief, any cells of any kind. Oops. 
sorry. And she's doing good too. Sometimes these breeder queens don't last a long time. Uh, two years is about the most I've gotten out of them. Sue Kobe told me that uh, there's no reason they can't last that long or even longer. But uh, occasionally they get, the bees want to supersede them prematurely, so you got to watch for that. Boy, these are all dark bees too. There's no yellow in that colony. Okay, so we'll go through the process. So Selena is going to put in our queen excluder barriers. And now the chosen frame that we want to graft off of. And she's going to shake two or three frames of bees on top of this frame. We, we figured that out that uh, helps a lot if you dump a bunch of bees in there on that frame before you put the queen on there. If you just put the queen on that empty frame, it sometimes takes longer for her to get around to starting to lay. So put plenty of bees right on top of that frame. And then we can put her in there. And, and this is all set up. Yeah, that looks good. Perfect. So, John, you go ahead and do the same thing. We're getting a little nectar splash. Look at that. We are. Do another one. That didn't land in there too good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my God, it's good. Down she goes. I like to lay the comb flat in case she falls, she's, you know, not falling off. And down she goes. Cool. Perfect. Now under some conditions, we'll actually come in a few days ahead of time and, uh, feed a little light syrup to stimulate the queen, but in this case, under these conditions, we don't have to do that. Again, it's Friday, and I, Friday, what time is it? About noon, I guess? Noon, exactly. And then we'll be back here on Tuesday afternoon, that's four days, and we should have some uh, larvae to graft. All right, good deal. <laughs>